Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new ASUS ProArt PZ13. This is a 3-in-1, and usually when I'm using something like this, I consider it more of a tablet. We do get a detachable keyboard that comes along with it. But when it comes to the new PZ13, this is actually powered by an ARM CPU. New Snapdragon X Plus chip, and we've got a beautiful 13-inch Lumina OLED display from ASUS. ASUS recently did kind of a rebrand on their ProArt series. We've got a brand new logo, and the new units that I've seen so far are using the nano black coating. This does resist fingerprints and smudges a lot better than the older material they used, and I do like the feel of it. Since this is a 3-in-1, instead of the box, we do get a couple extra accessories, like the rear cover slash stand. This will magnetically attach to the PZ13, all the cutouts we need here for that 13 megapixel camera around back. And of course, once this is attached, we can use it as a kickstand. I actually do like the color of this. Plus, we get a backlit detachable keyboard with a pretty massive trackpad, given that it's going on a 3-in-1. Just taking a closer look at that rear cover, definitely gives off kind of a military vibe. And really, when it comes down to it, this is military grade. The ProArt PZ13 is even IP52 rated, which means it'll resist dust, water, up to 70 degrees Celsius in extreme environments. They've run the vibration test, solar radiation test, low temperature test, minus 30 degrees Celsius, up to 15,000 feet. I mean, they've run a plethora of tests on this, and yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a really durable unit. Like I mentioned, the detachable keyboard that comes along with the PZ13 is backlit, plus we get a really nice trackpad here. And of course, we've got that built-in co-pilot button because everything's about AI right now. And given that this is powered by a Snapdragon X+, Plus, this can definitely power through AI tasks. Once the keyboard's attached, we don't have to do anything to connect it. It's got a physical connection now, magnetically attaches to the bottom of the PZ13. Fully backlit, it's just a single zone white LED, but it does come in handy in darker situations. Trackpad here feels really nice. Um, definitely for 3-in-1, I think they've done a great job with the detachable keyboard here. And of course, we can fold everything up on itself, and we've got a really portable package here with the PZ13. And with that IP52 rating, I don't mind folding this thing up and throwing it in my bag. I actually wouldn't even worry about it with this case connected. I.O. is pretty simple here. We've got two USB 4 Type-C ports and an SD card reader. This does come with an adapter to allow you to use a micro SD card in this slot here. We've also got a volume rocker and our power button. Checking out the overall specs here. Like I mentioned, this is using an ARM CPU. We've got that Snapdragon X Plus X1P42100. 8 cores, 8 threads, up to 3.4 GHz. We've got that Qualcomm Adreno GPU. The Qualcomm MPU up to 45 tops of AI performance, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X at 8,448 MHz, 1 terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, this is a PCIe 4.0 drive, 13.3 inch 3K OLED display at 60 Hz, remember these Pro Arts are running at 60, 500 nits of HDR peak brightness, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, 70 watt hour battery, and battery life on this is pretty awesome. We'll take a look by the end. It weighs 1.87 pounds, and this is running Windows 11. Now, keep in mind, even though this is an ARM chip here, it's not a watered down version of Windows 11. It's using the Prism translation layer from Microsoft. And so far, I've done some testing on the Snapdragon X Elite. It is working really well. The new ASUS Lumina OLED displays are definitely some of my favorite on the market right now. This is Pantone validated. Again, HDR up to 500 nits. Display HDR, True Black 500 certified, TUV certified, flicker free dimming, and burn in prevention is handled by ASUS OLED Care software. They also offer a free panel swap if it's under warranty. Getting right down to it, like I mentioned, uh, with these three in ones, I personally like using them as tablets. Just a lot easier for me to kind of pull this thing out, use the built in touch screen. With this new Snapdragon X Plus, this thing is really quick. We do have some performance modes that we can actually use. 16 gigs of that really fast LP DDR5X RAM. Of course, we've got that MPU to help offload AI tasks and the Adreno GPU. Since this is a ProArt model, we've actually got the ProArt Creator Hub and kind of think of this as, uh, you know, Armory Crate for the ProArt models. We've got a couple different performance profiles that we can use here. Windows, Whisper, Standard, and when we're plugged in, we can actually take this up to 20 watts. So we do have a manual mode screen color control, and we do have some profiles here like our DCI-P3, sRGB, 
Personally, I like the default profile with vivid colors enabled, and we've got a performance optimization suite. So if you know your main, so if you know the main app you're going to be using here is let's say GIMP for photo editing, you can put that right at the top, and it's going to prioritize CPU and GPU performance over to that application. I've been using the PZ13 for a couple days now, and as a whole, when it comes down to it, using this as an everyday laptop, it works out really well. Very fast here when it comes to web browsing, email checking, document editing. We can do photo editing, and I did run a few benchmarks here, but here's some 4K video playback, 4K, 60, HDR. It's going to go through it just fine. These Snapdragon chips do amazing with video playback. I've also been testing out Photoshop on the PZ13, and it's been able to handle everything that I've thrown at it. I haven't run into any issues, any crashing, or anything like that. And of course, you could always use open source software, something like GIMP if you wanted to, for photo editing. The Snapdragon X Plus is handling it really well. One thing that it kind of struggled with was 4K60 video editing. So I ran a couple benchmarks with Photoshop and Premiere Pro. I wanted to put this up against an x86 chip. The Intel Core Ultra 185H. As you can see from this benchmark here, they're neck and neck. Of course, that 185H did come ahead just by a little bit, but when we move over to the Premiere Pro benchmark, you can see the 185H trumps the Snapdragon X Plus. I mean, by quite a lot, actually. And this was actually the only video editor that I tested. I know there's several out there, and I'm sure something would work with this. But what I was trying to do was some high bitrate 4K 60fps footage, and it just felt a bit sluggish to me. I also ran Geekbench 6 just to kind of get a baseline here. Single core 2,394, multi 11,412. This is looking great. 8 cores, 8 threads. We're not working with the 16 core 32 thread CPU here. And it's based on ARM using that Microsoft Prism translation layer. And you know I had to test out some gaming. We've got Hades 2, high settings, 1200p, looks great, plays just fine at 60fps, so this is an easier one to run. I also went through with Cuphead. I tried to start up Skyrim, but it just wouldn't start up. It's a DX9 title, and I'm not sure how the drivers are for this Snapdragon X+. Plus. I also ran the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Lowest settings with Fidelity Cast. We only managed an average of 39fps with this title. And I really wanted to see how Forza Horizon 5 would run on this. One of my favorite arcade racers right now. Play it all the time. It's an easier to run title on integrated graphics. So I figured we wouldn't have an issue. It only ran at about 24 FPS low settings. So what I ended up doing was checking out some Xbox Cloud gaming. And I knew this was going to work out just fine. As long as you've got a good internet connection on basically any device that supports Xbox Cloud Gaming, you can definitely get some gaming out of the way. But it's streaming from their server, so there is some input latency. One of the most important things when it comes to a portable device like a laptop or even a tablet is battery life. And I can tell you right now that this thing gets absolutely amazing battery life. Using the PC Mark video playback test, screen brightness set at 50%, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, this got 20 hours and 6 minutes of video playback. To tell you the truth, I kept checking back every couple hours, and I was like, man, when is this thing going to die? Because I was kind of ready to wrap up this test here. 20 hours, 6 minutes out of this thing is pretty awesome. So I've had some time to spend with the ASUS ProArt PZ13. Battery life, awesome. Screen, absolutely amazing. The Snapdragon X Plus is a great performer for everyday use case scenarios. Even photo editing using Photoshop. I mean, this is right up there with that 185H. But where this kind of fell behind the Snapdragon X Elite and X86 chips on the market was 4K 60 HDR video editing with Premiere Pro. DaVinci Resolve is something that I personally don't use, but there is an ARM version out. I've downloaded it. I'm going to be messing around with it for the next couple days, but if there's another video editing suite that you use in Windows, let me know in the comments below and I can do some testing with that. Great battery life and military grade specs makes it a great portable 3-in-1, and the screen here is only 60 hertz. I know some people were saying they wanted a 120 in this. If you're using this for photo editing, I mean, there's really no need to go with a 120 hertz display but I completely understand where people are coming from. Either way, these ASUS OLEDs are some of my favorite on the market. Ultra deep blacks, super vivid colors. I just really do like this display and I can overlook the fact that it's only a 60 Hertz panel here. But that's gonna wrap it up for my first look at the ProArt PZ13. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links to their official website down below. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments.
And like always, thanks for watching.